Hello everyone, so it's that time again where I have to make a computer science related video. This time we're going to be talking about Infernal Origins and setting up a server for it. Even though they have instructions on their Discord, they're not the most clear, and nobody seems to be very helpful when it comes to doing all of this, and I have enough experience with this sort of stuff to be able to help you guys out in case you're trying to do this. By clicking the three dots on the installation under My Mod Packs and Curse Words, you'll be able to bring up a menu. In order to get the relevant files for the server, we're going to need to press the Open Folder button. Once we have pressed that button, a directory will open up containing the CurseForge installation, which will have all of the files required to create the server. In this case, we're going to need to make sure to grab the config, the default config, the global data packs, the mods, and the scripts. With those files, we will take them and copy them over to a new directory. This will be where the server is located. Simply create a new folder and then copy them over. We will have to go back to the CurseForge page in my mod packs and check Infernal Origins Forge version in order to actually create the server files to go alongside all of the things that we just pulled out of it. In this case, we will see we need to get 1.16.5 Forge 36.239. Now this version may change in the future, but as long as you know how to navigate here, you'll be able to go get the relevant version of Forge required to run the server. In order to go and get the Forge file required, we're going to have to go to the official Forge area where they distribute this file. In this case, on the sidebar of this website, we will see that 1.16.5 is a version we can access by opening the dropdown for 1.16. It's crucial to get the correct version of Forge, so we're going to press the Show All Versions button after we've opened up the downloads for 1.16.5. Once you hit that drop down, you'll be able to see every version available for that specific game version that you're trying to run. In this case, we need to make sure we find 36.239. Simply click the installer button and then you will be redirected and the download will start after you move through all of the additional pages it may open. By opening up this installer, you'll be able to start installing the actual server files to run Forge and get all these mods to load up correctly. Make sure to select Install Server instead of Install Client. Additionally, press the three dots to open up a directory navigator. What we're going to do is figure out where our server is located currently, which will be the file that you made at the beginning of this tutorial. You're going to open that up and you're going to target that directory because that's where we want all the Forge files to go. The Forge installer may warn you that you have files in that directory already, but that doesn't matter as they won't conflict. Once the installer is complete, you'll be able to look into the server file that you made at the beginning and see all of the different files that it created. The most important file that you'll find in there is the Forge jar. This is going to be the launch point of your server. So we now need to create a file that will launch the server correctly using Java. It is crucial to have Java 8 or Java 11 installed or else Infernal Origins will crash. What we'll have to do is create a text file with a set of Java instructions to launch this jar. In order to do that, I've left in the description the code that you'll need to run. You will have to fill in the Forge name. You can get that by right-clicking on the Forge um, jar file and renaming it and then just copying that with Control-C and pasting it in. Once you put that text into the text file, you are going to save that text file as a .bat file. So you will name it start.bat and then save it. This will allow you to run it as a set of instructions for Java. Assuming you've done things correctly at this point, you should have these files and probably a few others from the Forge installer located inside of your server's directory. This means that you are almost ready to launch the server. Because the server isn't delivered to you as a CurseForge server pack, you're going to need to delete quite a few client-sided mods in order to run the pack correctly, as you wouldn't want these running on the server side as it could hinder performance or cause other issues. Additionally, I would suggest deleting the fire spread mod as something about this mod will cause Mixin to crash unpredictably. So I don't think it really adds much to the gameplay and it's better to be safe than sorry over some silly little fire spread. If you've made it this far, that means you're ready to launch the server. Double-click the start.bat file that we made earlier, and everything should begin to load up. It may crash initially, because you'll need to accept the EULA. 
This will be created as a text file called ULED.txt. Simply go into that file and switch the value to true. Once you've done that, restart the server again by double clicking the start.bat and it should fully launch this time. I will not go into port forwarding or how to set up any of that in this video. At this point, you should be able to go into your server.properties and tweak the port to be whatever it needs to be. Once you've done that, simply hand out the IP and the port to whoever you want to have joined and you should be good to go. In the event you're using a Minecraft server host, this process will be slightly different in the fact that we are not going to use a start.bat file, unless of course you're using a dedicated machine, in which case the process is relatively the same. However, on Linux it's a little bit different and I don't expect somebody using a dedicated machine to need help with this. So if you're using a Minecraft server host, which I strongly suggest to not do because you'd be better off buying a dedicated machine in the long run, um, you can just drop all of these files directly into the uh, server's most likely FTP panel is what a lot of them use these days. And make sure you target the jar that we created during the Forge installer part, and it will launch just the same as if you use the start.bat. If you happen to run into any issues while doing this, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. 